Theophi initially spread a message of salvation, apocalyptic, apocalypticism, spiritual revolution and happiness, and distrust of the outside world, which the members called the system. Like some other fundamentalist groups, it foretold the coming of a dictator called the Antichrist, the rise of a brutal one-world government, and its eventual overthrow by Jesus Christ and the Second Coming. Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Lease. And on today's episode, we continue our season of Decoding Cults with the Family International. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this episode. Audible is a massive library of audiobooks from every genre. They've got everything from the latest bestsellers to those old classics you've always wanted to read, but just never got around to it. And they've got a huge range of genres, romance, mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever floats your boat. It's super easy to get started with Audible. All you need is an internet connection and a smartphone or tablet. You can listen at home or at work, on the train, during your commute, while you're walking your dog, you get the picture. It's endless content for endless moments in life. And if you want a free three month free trial and a free audiobook of your choice, head on over to audibletrial.com slash larry21. But now we dive into today's topic. Decoding cults, the children of God, or previously known as the Family International. The Family International is a Christian new religious movement founded in Huntington Beach, California in 1968 by David Berg. It has been criticized as an authoritarian cult. Originally named Teens for Christ, it has gone under a number of different names. It gained notoriety as the Children of God. It was later, later renamed and reorganized as the Family of Love and eventually shortened to the family. As of 2004, it is gone by the Family International. Former members have accused the group of sexual abuse, physical abuse, exploitation, targeting of vulnerable people, and creating lasting trauma among children raised in the group. According to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, at its height, the family movement had tens of thousands of members, including River and Joaquin Phoenix and Jeremy Spencer. TFI initially spread a message of salvation, apocalyptic, apocalypticism, spiritual revolution and happiness, and distrust of the outside world, which the members called the system. Like some other fundamentalist groups, it foretold the coming of a dictator called the Antichrist, the rise of a brutal one-world government, and its eventual overthrow by Jesus Christ and the Second Coming. In 1976, it began a method of evangelism called flirty fishing that used sex to show God's love and mercy and win converts resulting in controversy. TFI's founder and prophetic leader David Berg, who was first called Moses David in the Texas press and also referred to as Father David by members, gave, him, gave himself the title of King, the last end time prophet, Moses and David. Berg commu communicated with his followers via Mo letters, letters of instruction and counsel on myriad spiritual and practical subjects until his death in late 1994. After his death, his widow Karen Zerbe became the leader of TFI, taking the title of Queen and Prophetess. Zerbe married Steve Kelly, an assistant of Berg's whom Berg had handpicked as her consort. Kelly took the title of King Peter and became the face of TFI, speaking in public more often than either Berg or Zerbe. There have been multiple allegations of child sexual abuse made by past members. Berg preached a combination of traditional Christian evangelism with elements popular with the counterculture of the 1960s. There was much end of the world imagery found in the book of Revelation and the New Testament, preaching of impending doom for America and the ineffectiveness of established churches. Berg urged a return to the early Christian community described in the Bible's Book of Acts, in which believers lived together and shared all, resembling communal living of late 1960s hippies. The founder of the movement, David Brandt Berg, was a former Christian and Missionary Alliance pastor. Berg started in 1968 as an evangelical preacher with a following of born-again hippies who gathered at a coffee house in Huntington Beach in Orange County, California in 1969 
after having a revelation that California would be hit by a major earthquake. He left Huntington Beach and took his followers on the road. They would proselytize in the street and distribute pamphlets. Leaders within COG were referred to as the chain. Members of the Children of God founded communes, first called Calonies, now referred to as homes, in various cities. Berg communicated his followers by writing letters. He published nearly 3,000 letters over a period of 24 years, referred to as the Mo Letters. In a letter written in January 1972, Berg stated that he was God's prophet for the contemporary world, attempting to further solidify his spiritual authority within the group. Berg's letters also contained public acknowledgement of his own failings and weaknesses. For example, he issued a Mo letter entitled, My Confession, I Was an Alcoholic, relating his depression after some of his closest supporters quit in 1978. In 1972, a Mo letter reportedly entitled, Flee as a Bird to Your Mountain, was interpreted by some members as a warning to leave America. God was going to destroy the U.S. and we had to get out. This, along with the pressure, members felt that parents were trying to rescue children who had joined Children with God, encouraged members to migrate abroad, first to Europe and eventually to Latin America and East Asia. By 1972, COG stated it had 130 communities around the world, and by the mid-1970s, it had colonies in an estimated 70 countries. In 1976, Berg had introduced a new proselytizing method called flirty fishing, which encouraged female members to show God's love through sexual relationships with potential converts. Flirty fishing was practiced by members of Berg's inner circle starting in 1973 and was introduced to the general membership in 1976. Then we have the family of love from 1978 to 1981. The Children of God was abolished in February 1978, and Berg renamed his group the Family of Love, what Berg called the Reorganization Nationalization Revolution. Berg reorganized the movement, dismissing more than 300 leading members after hearing unspecified reports of serious misconduct and abuse of their positions. Reportedly involved were the chain's abuse of authority and disagreements within it about the continued use of flirty fishing. The group was also accused of sexually abusing and raping minors within the organization, with considerable evidence to support this claim. One-eighth of the total membership left the movement. Those who remained became part of a reorganized movement called the Family of Love, and later the Family. The majority of the group's beliefs remained the same. The Family of Love era was characterized by international expansion. After 1978, flirty fishing increased drastically and became common practice within the group. A Mo letter from 1980, for example, was headlined, The Devil Hates Sex, But God Loves It. In some areas, flirty fishers used escort agencies to meet potential converts. According to TFI, over 100,000 received God's gift of salvation through Jesus, and some chose to live the life of a disciple and missionary as a result, result excuse me, of flirty fishing. Researcher Bill Bainbridge obtained data from TFI suggesting that from 1974, until 1987, members had had sexual contact with over 200,000 people while practicing flirty fishing. And now we're taking a look at the family from 1982 to 1994. According to the family's official history, the group had far fewer common standards of conduct during the family of love stage than it previously had. In the late 1980s, the group tightened its standards to ensure that all member communities provided a very wholesome environment for all, particularly the children, and changed its name to the family. In March 1989, TF issued a statement that in early 1985, an urgent memorandum had been sent to all members, reminding them that any such activities are strictly forbidden within our group, and such, such activities were grounds for immediate excommunication from the group. In the early 1990s, the group broke years of virtual silence and began inviting reporters and religious scholars to visit the commune in La Habra, California, where at least the Washington Post journalist Gustav Niebuhr found its members to be a clean-cut bunch, friendly and courteous. At that time, the family claimed to have about 9,000 members worldwide, with about 750 scattered across the U.S. The group emphasized its mainstream Christian opposition to abortion, homosexuality, drugs, and drunkenness, and its respect for Reverend Billy Graham. And now, before we get in any further, hit that 
like button, subscribe to the channel if you like our content, and hit the bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And now from 1995 to 2003. After Berg's death in October 94, Karen Zerbe assumed leadership of the group. In February 1995, the group introduced the Love Charter, which defined the rights and responsibilities of charter members and homes. The charter also included the Fundamental Family Rules, a summary of rules and guidelines for past TF publications, which are still in effect. In the 94 to 95 British court case, the Honorable Lord Justice Alan Ward ruled that the group, including some of its top leaders, had in the past engaged in abusive sexual practices involving minors and also used several corporal punishment and sequestration of minors. He found that by 1995, TF had abandoned these practices and concluded that they were a safe environment for children. Nevertheless, he did require that the group cease all corporal punishment of children in the UK and denounce any of Berger's writings that were responsible for children in TF having been subjected to sexually inappropriate behavior. And now, from the Family International. The Love Charter is the family set governing document that entails each member's rights, responsibilities, and requirements. While the missionary member st statutes and fellow member statutes were written for the governance of TFI's missionary member and fellow member circles, respectively, FD homes were reviewed every six months against a published set of criteria. The Love Charter increased the number of single family homes as well as homes that relied on jobs such as self employment. TF5's recent teachings are based on beliefs, which they term the new spiritual weapons. TF5 members believe that they are soldiers in the spiritual war of good versus evil for the souls and hearts of men. Spirit helpers include angels, other religious and mythical figures, and departed humans, including celebrities. For example, the goddess Aphrodite, the snowman, Merlin, the sphinx, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Richard Nixon, and Winston Churchill. The Keys of the Kingdom TFI believes that the biblical passage Matthew 16, 19 refers to an increasing amount of spiritual authority that was given to Peter and the early disciples. According to TFI beliefs, this passage refers to keys that were hidden and unused in the centuries that followed, but were again revealed through Karen Zerbe as more power to pray and obtain miracles. TFI members call on the various keys of the kingdom for extra effect during prayer. The keys, like most TFI beliefs, were published in magazines that looked like comic books in order to make them teachable to children. These beliefs are still generally held and practiced even after the reboot documents of 2010. Loving Jesus Loving Jesus is a term TFI members use to describe their intimate sexual relationship with Jesus. TFI describes its Loving Jesus teaching as a radical form of bridal theology. They believe the Church of Followers is Christ's bride, called to love and serve him with wifely fervor. However, this bridal theology is taken further, encouraging members to imagine Jesus is joining them during sexual intercourse and masturbation. Male members are cautioned to visualize themselves as women in order to avoid a homosexual relationship with Jesus. Many TFI publications and spirit messages claim to be from Jesus himself. Elaborate this intimate sexual relation they believe Jesus desires and needs. TFI imagines itself as a special bride in the graphic poetry, guided visualizations, artwork, and songs. Some TFI literature is not brought into conservative countries for fear it may be classified at customs as pornography. The literature outlining this view of Jesus and his desire for a sexual relationship with believers was edited for younger teens, then further edited for children. The family has been criticized by the press in the anti-cult movement. Ex-members have accused the family's leadership of following a policy of allying to outsiders, being steeped in history of sexual deviance, and even meddling in third world politics. The family replies that it is a victim of persecution. Pressure to raise money could be intense. Ex-member Gollins says that members who were good at raising money and distributing the pamphlets were called shiners. Those with poor sales were called shamers. If you missed your quota, you could not come home for dinner, he said. And that is all we have for our 
dive into the children of God or the family. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And now on to our pod next segment. Today's question is, why do you think people join a cult in the first place? So I would say, I think it's a sense of belonging, a sense of family that good or bad, the whole group kind of supports each other and believes in the same thing. So there's not really a disagreement within a family unless something goes wrong in the cult. Uh, sense of belonging and a sense of purpose I would say but hey let us know in the comments section below and before we go if you want to buy us if you want to support the channel you can buy us a coffee at buymecoffee.com slash tcns your support helps the channel grow upgrade our equipment bring a new host be able to pay them and create even more content as always thank you so much for watching and listening we will see you next time